Chapter fifty eight of Jerusalem to Revelations A Quartet of Spiritual Experience by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Purgatorio thirteen Purgatory The Second Ring Envy instances of generosity the envious we now were at the summit of the stairs where for the second time is cut away the mount a scent of which frees one from sin and there a cornice like the first one girds the hillside round about save that its arc more quickly curves there is no shaded carving apparent here nor is there any mark. The bank seems bare, as also seems the path, with but the livid colour of the rock. If we await folk here, of whom to ask our way, the poet argued, I am afraid our choice will be perhaps delayed too long. Then on the sun he fixed his steadfast eyes, made of his right, the centre for his motion, and turned the left side of himself around. O oh, thou sweet light, with confidence in whom I enter this new path, conductest thou, he said, as one should be conducted here. Thou warmst the world, and on it thou dost shine. If aught else urge not to the contrary, Thy rays at all times ought to be our guides. Already had we gone as far up there, As here on earth is reckoned for a mile, In little time, because of ready will, When, flying toward us, there were spirits heard, who, though unseen, were to the board of love uttering their courteous calls. The voice which first passed flying said aloud, They have no wine, and then behind us kept repeating it, and ere, uh, because of having moved away, it could be heard no more, another passing cried, I'm Orestes nor did that one linger. What are these voices, father? said I then, and even while I was asking, lo, a third, which said, Love those from whom you've ill received. The kindly teacher then, This circle whips the fault of envy, hence the scourge's cords are drawn from love. The curb will probably give forth a sound the contrary of this. In my opinion, I believe thou'lt hear it before the pass of pardon thou attain. But keenly through the air I address thy gaze, and thou'lt see people on ahead of us who seated are and each against the cliff. Then, wider than before, I oped mine eyes. I looked ahead, and shades I saw with cloaks not differing from the colour of the stone. And when a little further on we were, I heard one crying, Mary, pray for us, and cries to Michael, Peter, and all the saints. Nor do I think there walks on earth today a man so hard that he would not be pierced by sympathy for what I then perceived. For, after I had drawn so near to them, that what they did with clearness came to me, tears from my eyes were drawn by bitter grief. Covered, they seemed to me, with coarse hair-cloth, and one sustained the other with his shoulder, while all of them were by the bank sustained. Even thus the blind, in want of livelihood, at pardon stand to beg for what they need, 
and one upon the other bows his head, that pity may be speedily aroused, not merely by the sound of what they say, but by their aspect, which no less implores. And as the sun availeth not the blind, so to the shades whereof I spoke just now, the sky's light willeth not to grant itself, because an iron band runs through and sows the eyelids of them all, as with wild hawks one does, since otherwise they'd not keep still. To me it seemed an outrage that, unseen, I should see others as I walked along. I therefore turned to my wise counsellor. He well knew what the dumb man wished to say, and therefore waited not for me to ask, but speak, he said, be brief and to the point. Virgil, on that side of the cornice ledge, was coming on with me, whence one can fall, because it wreathes itself with no bank there. On the other side I had those zealous shades, who through the horrid seams were pressing so their tears that they were bathing both their cheeks. Turning to them, I thus began. O oh, people, who certain are of seeing that high light which your desire hath for its only object, so melt grace soon the scum upon your conscience, that memory's stream may through it clearly flow. Tell me, for grateful will it be to me, and pleasing, if there is among you here a soul that Latin is. It will be well for him, perhaps, if I should come to know it? Oh, brother mine, we both are citizens of one true city, but thou meanest one who, while a pilgrim, lived in Italy? It seemed to me that this I heard for answer a little further on than where I was. I therefore let myself be heard much further. Among the rest, I saw a shade which seemed expectant in its looks, and if one asked, how so, held up its chin, as do the blind. Spirit, said I, that dost subdue thyself, that thou mayst climb, if she that didst reply make thyself known to me by place or name, Sionese I was, she answered, and with these cleanse here my guilty life, and pray to him with tears, that he may lend himself to us. Though called Sapia, sapient was I not, for I was far more glad of others' harm than I of my good fortune ever was, and that thou mayst not think that I deceive thee, even as I tell thee, hear how mad I was. Once my year's arch was on its downward course. When with their foes my fellow-citizens were joined in battle near the town of Col, I prayed to God for that which he had willed. When, routed there, they took the bitter path of flight, I felt, on seeing them pursued, a joy unequalled by all other joys. I therefore upward turned my daring face, and cried to God, I fear thee now no more, as doth the blackbird at the least fair weather. When I was at the end of life, I longed for peace with God, but not yet would my debt have been diminished by repentance here, had it not been that Pietro Petignano, who of his charity was grieved for me, was mindful of me in his holy prayers. But who art thou that askest of our state while going on, and hast thine eyes unclosed, as I believe, and dost while breathing talk? Mine 
eyes will yet be taken from me here but not for long said i for they have not offended much by being turned by envy far greater is the fear wherewith my soul is filled of that tormenting pain below for even now the load there weighs upon me and she who then led thee to us up here if to return below thou think and i he that is with me here and speaketh not but i am living therefore ask of me elected spirit if thou'st have me move my mortal feet in thy behalf on earth oh this she answered is so strange to hear that certainly it proves god's love for thee therefore assist me with thy prayers at times i beg thee by what most thou longest for if e'er thou tread the soil of tuscany that thou among my kin restore my fame among that vain folk wilt thou see them there which hopes in talamone and will waste more hope on it than on the diana quests but still more will the admirals invest Purgatorio fourteen Purgatory the second ring Envy Valdorno and Romagna in thirteen hundred Instances of Punished Envy Who is this spirit who around our mount is circling thus ere death have given him flight and at his will opens and veils his eyes? I know not who he is, but know he's not alone. Ask thou that nearer art to him, and greet him fairly, so that he may speak. Two spirits, who were leaning on each other, thus talked of me upon the right hand there, then turned their faces up to speak to me, and one said, Soul, that still held in thy body toward heaven art going, of thy charity console us now, and tell us whence thou comest, and who thou art, for thou dost cause in us such wonder at the grace accorded thee, as that demands which never was before. And I, a small stream, winds through Tuscany, which up in Falterona hath its rise, and is not sated by a hundred miles. From somewhere on its banks I bring this body. Vain would it be to tell you who I am, because my name makes no great sound as yet. If with my mind I rightly penetrate thy meaning, that one then replied to me who spoke before, thou talkest of the Arno? Thereat the other spirit said to him, why did this man conceal that river's name, as people hide the name of dreadful things? The shade, who had been questioned as to this, discharged its duty thus. I do not know, but meet it is that this veiled name should die, for from its source, where that wild mountain chain, whence severed is Polaris, swells so greatly that in few places doth it pass that mark, to there where it betakes it to restore whatever from the sea the sky sucks up whence rivers get what goes along with them virtue is snake-like as a foe pursued by all or through the regions evil luck or through bad customs which incite men there hence those that in this wretched valley dwell have changed their nature so that it would seem that Circe had them in her pasturage. Among foul hogs of acorns worthier far than of all other food that's fit for man to use, it first directs its sorry path. As down it comes, it afterwards finds curs that snarl more fiercely than their strength comports, and turns from these its snout aside in scorn it keeps on falling and the more it swells the more that cursed and unlucky ditch 
finds that the dogs are turning into wolves descending them through many a gloomy gorge foxes it finds so full of fraud that naught have they to fear lest cunning master them nor shall i cease to speak though overheard and for this man it were well if he recall hereafter what a truthful spirit shows me thy grandson i behold who first becomes a hunter of those wolves upon the banks of that fierce stream and terrifies them all he sells their flesh while still alive then kills them as an old beast he would of life depriving many himself of honour he deprives he issues bloody from the dismal wood and leaves it such that in a thousand years twill not rewood itself as once it was as at the announcement of some painful loss the face of him who listens is disturbed from wheresoe'er the danger may assail him even thus did i behold that other soul who turned to listen grow distressed and sad as soon as he had gathered in that speech the words of one soul and the other's face had caused me to desire to know their names therefore with prayers i mingled this request the spirit therefore who addressed me first began again thou have me condescend to do for thee what thou for me wilt not but since god wills that so much of his grace should shine in thee i'll not be niggardly guido del duca know then that i am and so consumed by envy was my blood that had i seen a man becoming happy livid with envy thou hadst seen me turn of what i sowed i'm reaping now the straw o oh, human race why set your heart on things wherein companionship must be forbidden this is Rinieri, this the honour is and glory of the house of calboli whose worth since him none hath inherited nor hath his blood alone despoiled itself tween po and mountains reno and the sea of those good things which truth and joy require for in those bounds the country is so full of poison stocks that only slowly now would they be lessened even if it were told where hard good lizio arigo minardi pierre traversaro and guido di capigna all romagnols turned into bastards now when in bologna will a fabro rise when in Fiance, a bernardine di fosco the noble scion of a little plant wonder not tuscan if i weep now when with guido da prata i recall to mind ugolin d'azzo who among us dwelt frederick tignoso and his company the traversara house the anastagi and both these families are void of heirs the ladies and the knights the toils and ease which love and courtesy once made us crave where hearts have grown so bad o oh, bretinoro wherefore not banish since thy family and many people with them have departed that guiltless they might be Bangnasaval, begetting sons no longer doeth well but castracaro ill and conio worse which still takes trouble to beget such camp well the pagani too will fare when once the demon shall have gone but not so well that an unspotted fame will e'er remain to them o oh, ugolin de fantoli thy name is safe 
since one can now no more be looked for who as a degenerate can darken it but go thy way now tuscan for weeping now affords me far more zest than speech how talk hath so distressed my mind we knew that those dear spirits heard us leaving and therefore merely by their keeping still they made us trust the path which we were taking when we advancing found ourselves alone a voice which seemed like lightning when it cleaves the air was heard and as it reached us there said whosoever findeth me shall slay me then vanished as when thunder rolls away if suddenly a cloud be rent apart soon as our hearing had a truce from this behold another with so great a crash it seemed to be his following thunderclap i am her glorious who was turned to stone then to draw closer to the poet's side i took a backward not a forward step the air was calm on all sides now when he that was the painful bit which in his bounds should hold a man but ye take in the bait and so the ancient adversary's hook draweth you to him hence of small avail is either curb or lure heaven calleth you and showing to you its eternal beauties around you moves and yet your eyes look down hence he who seeth all things scourges you purgatorio fifteen purgatory the second ring envy the angel of generosity the third ring anger instances of gentleness between the third hour's close and day's beginning as much as is apparent of the sphere which like a child is ever given to play so much now of its course toward evening seemed remaining to the sun twas vespers there and midnight here and fully on the face its rays were striking us because the mount had so been circled by us that we now were going on directly toward the west when far more blindingly than e'er before i felt my forehead overcome by splendour and was bewildered by these unknown things over my eyebrows hence i raised my hands and made myself the scream which filing off tempers excessive light in what is seen as when from water or a looking-glass a ray leaps up in the opposite direction and in the same way mounts that down it came and from the falling of a stone departs at equal distance to the same extent as both experiment and art reveal even so it seemed to me that i was smitten as by a light reflected there before me because of which my sight was swift to flee dear father what is that said i from which i cannot screen my face sufficiently to help me and which toward us seems to come wonder thou not he answered me if still heaven's family affect thy sight an angel is this who comes to ask us to ascend it soon will happen that to see such things will be no burden but as great a joy as nature hath enabled thee to feel as soon as we had reached the blessed angel with joyful voice he said enter from hence a stairway far less steep than were the rest we were ascending having thence departed when blessed are the merciful was sung behind us and rejoice o thou that winnest 
my teacher then, and I, we two alone were going up. And as we went, I thought of how I might get profit from his words. Whereat I turned toward him and asked, What meant that spirit from Romania when he mentioned forbidden and companionship in things? Hence he, of his worst fault he knows the harm, hence let it not surprise if he therefore rebuke men that it be lamented less. Because your wishes aim at that wherein each share is lessened through companionship, envy fain moves the bellows for your size. If love, though, for the highest sphere of all, were upward turning your desires, that fear would not be in your breast, because the more there are up yonder by whom ours is said so much more good doth each of them possess, and so much more love in that cloister burns. I fast much more from being satisfied, said I, than had I silent been at first, and more of doubt I gather in my mind. How can it be, then, that a good that shed should make more owners richer with itself than if by but a few it be possessed? And he to me, because thou fastenest thy mind exclusively on earthly things, thou drawest darkness out of very light. That good ineffable and infinite which dwells up yonder runs as fast to love as to bright bodies comes a ray of light so much it gives itself as is the warmth that findeth hence as is the extent of love so much the eternal worth spreads over it the more there are up there that love each other the more there are to love and more the love and mirror-like the more of love each sheds on each and if my talk sate not thy hunger thou shalt see beatrice and she will fully free thee from this and every other want do thou then see to it that speedily thou have removed as two already are the five wounds which are closed by causing pain wishing to say, Thou satisfiest me. I saw that I had reached the following ring. My fond eyes therefore caused me to keep still. There it appeared to me that I was wrapped in an ecstatic vision all at once, and that within a temple I perceived much people, and a lady at the door, who with the sweet mien of a mother said, Wherefore, my son, hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought for thee in sorrow. Here, when she had ceased to speak, that disappeared which had before appeared. Then there appeared another, o'er whose cheeks those tears were streaming down which grief distills, when born of great resentment toward another, saying, If thou art master of the city, about whose name there was among the gods such strife, and whence all knowledge sparkles forth, avenge thyself on those audacious arms, Pisistratus, which dared embrace our daughter. Kindly and gently then that lord appeared to answer her with looks of self-control. What shall we do to him who hateth us, if he who loves us is by us condemned? Then folk I saw, inflamed by anger's fire, who bent on killing a young man with stones, cried to each other, Nought but kill him, kill! And him I saw, bowed to the ground in death, which now oppressed him. Of his eyes he e'er made gates of heaven, and in that anguish prayed the Lord on high, with looks which unlock pity, that he his persecutors would forgive. When 
once my mind returned outside again to those things which outside of it are true i recognize my not untruthful errors my leader who could see that i was acting like one who frees himself from slumber said what aileth thee that thou canst not stand up but hast been coming more than half a league veiling thine eyes and reeling with thy legs like one or come by either wine or sleep oh my dear father if thou listen to me i'll tell thee what it was appeared to me said i when i was thus deprived of legs and he if on thy face a hundred masks thou hadst thy thoughts would not be hid from me however small they were what thou hast seen was lest thou free thyself from opening up thy heart unto those waters of thy peace which from the eternal fountain are diffused i did not ask what ails thee as would one who looks but with the eye which seeth not when once the body lies inanimate but asked it to endow thy feet with strength so must the indolent be spurred when slow to use their waking time when it returns on through the vesper hours we went along forward intent as far as e'er our eyes could reach against the late and shining rays when lo a smoke in our direction came little by little and as dark as night nor was there any place of shelter from it this of pure air deprived us and of eyes Purgatorio sixteen Purgatory the third ring anger free will and the corruption of the world The gloom of hell and of a night deprived of every planet neath a narrow sky darkened as much as possible by clouds ne'er made so thick a veil before my face nor to my feeling was so rough in tissue as was the smoke which covered us up there for that permitted not of opened eyes because of which my wise and trusty escort drew near to me and offered me his shoulder even as a blind man walks behind his guide in order not to go astray and strike aught that might hurt him or might even kill so going through that foul and bitter air i listened to my leader who said only take care that thou be not cut off from me voices i heard and each appeared to pray for peace and mercy to the lamb of god who taketh sins away their only prelude was lamb of god and all had but one word and intonation hence among them all there seemed to be the fullest harmony of those then spirits teacher whom i hear said i and he to me thou judgest rightly as on they go they loosen angers not now who art thou that cleavest thus our smoke and yet dost speak of us as if thou still by monthly calends went dividing time these words were uttered by a single voice my teacher therefore said to me reply and ask him if on this side one goes up and i o oh, creature that dost cleanse thyself that beautiful thou mayest return to him who made thee thou'lt hear marvels following me i'll follow thee as far as i'm allowed he answered and if smoke permit not sight hearing instead will keep us linked together 
I thereupon began. I go on high, while in that swathing band which death dissolves, and through the infernal anguish came I here, and whereas God hath wrapped me in his grace so much that he would have me see his court by means entirely out of modern use, conceal not who thou wast before thy death, but tell it me, and whether toward the pass I rightly go, and be thy words our guides. Lombard I was, and Marco was I called. Familiar with the world, I love the worth, toward which all oh, men have now unbent their bows. For mounting upward thou art going rightly, he thus replied, and added, I beseech thee, pray for me there, when thou shalt be above. And I to him, I pledge my faith to thee, that what thou askest of me I will do, but with a doubt I'll burst, unless therefrom I free myself. Simple at first, it now is doubled by thy speech, which makes me here and elsewhere sure of that wherewith I link it. The world is certainly as wholly void of every virtue as thou tell'st me, and is with evil big and overspread. But pray point out its cause, that I may see, and show it unto other men. For one puts it in heaven, another here below. At first he heaved a sigh profound, which grief to arm me changed then brother he began the world is blind and thou indeed comes hence ye that are living still attribute upward each cause to heaven alone as though it moved everything with it of necessity if this were so free will would be destroyed within you and no justice would there be in having joy for good and grief for ill. Heaven starts your inclinations, though I say not all, but even supposing that I did, light has been given to you for good and evil, with free will, which, if it endure fatigue in its first fights with heaven, will afterward, if duly nourished, conquer everything. Beneath a greater power and better nature ye freely lie, and that creates within you the mind which heaven hath not in its control. Hence, if the present world go wrong, the cause is in yourselves, and should in you be sought. Of this I'll now a true spy be for thee. Forth from the hand of him who e'er it lives, delights in it, even like a little maid who weeps and laughs and wantons like a child issues the simple soul which knoweth not save that proceeding from a joyous maker it gladly turns to that which pleases it at first it tasteth things of little good deceived thereby it runneth after them unless a guide or check divert its love Hence, as a bit, a law must needs be set, a king must needs be had, who should, at least, the tower of the truthful town discern. The laws exist, but who sets hand to them? No one, because the shepherd who precedes can chew the cud, but hath not cloven who. The people, hence, who see their guide strive solely for those good things for which it longs itself, feedeth thereon, and asks for nothing more. Well canst thou see that evil leadership, and not that nature in you is corrupt, is what has caused the world to be so wicked. Rome, which once made it good, was wont to have two sons which rendered visible both roads that of the world and that of god one now 
hath quenched the other. To the bishop's staff the sword is joined, and badly needs must one fare with the other. Since together joined, neither the other fears. Recall to mind, if thou believe me not, the ear of corn, for every grass is by its own seed known. Throughout the country, watered by the Po and Adige, one used to find both virtue and courtesy, ere Frederick had his strife. With safety it can nowadays be crossed by any who, through shame, refrained from speech with good men, or avoided intercourse. There are, indeed, three old men still, in whom the old age chides the modern, and who long for God to give them back a better life. Corrado da Palazzo, good Gerardo, and Guido da Castello, better called the simple Lombard, as in France he is. Say, therefore, that to-day the Church of Rome, by joining in herself two kinds of rule, falls in the mire, and fouls herself and load. O oh, Marco mine, said I, thine arguments are good, and now I see why Levi's sons were from inheriting debarred. But which, Gerardo, is the one who, as thou sayest, as sample of the people now extinct, remaineth to reproach this savage age? Thy speech deceives or tests me, he replied, for thou, addressing me in Tuscan speech, seemst not to know who good Gerardo was. I know him not by other added name, unless I took it from his daughter Gaia. God keep you, for with you I come no further. Already whitening now, behold the light which rays out through the smoke, and I must go. The angels there, ere I be seen by him. He thus turned back, nor would he hear me more. End of chapter 58Chapter 59 of Jerusalem to Revelations A Quartet of Spiritual Experience by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Purgatorio 17. Purgatory. The Third Ring. Anger. INSTANCES OF PUNISHED ANGER THE ANGEL OF PEACE LOVE READER, REMIND THYSELF IF E'ER A FOG OR TOOK THEE ON A MOUNTAIN, ONE THROUGH WHICH THOU COULDST NOT SEE IN ANY OTHER WAY THAN MOLES DO THROUGH THE MEMBRANES OR THEIR EYES, HOW, WHEN THE DAMP THICK MISTS BEGIN TO THIN, the sun's orb feebly pierces them, and quickly will thine imagination come to see how I first saw the sun again, which now was at its setting. Thus, as I mine own was matching with my teacher's trusty steps, from such a cloud I came into the beam, already dead upon the shores below. O oh, thou imagination, which at times dost steal us so from outer things, that though a thousand trumpets blow, one hears them not. What moveth thee, if sense contribute not? A light which takes in heaven its form impels thee freely, or by a will which sends it down. The vision of her cruelty who changed her form into the bird which most delights in song, appeared in my imagination. And hereupon my mind was so shut up within itself that nothing that was then received by it 
came to it from without. Then into my high fantasy there reigned one crucified, contemptuous and proud in aspect, and as such he met his death. Around him were the great Ahasuerus, Esther his wife, and righteous Mordecai, who so whole-hearted was in word and deed. And as this picture of its own accord broke up, as doth a bubble when it lacks the water it was formed with all, a maid rose in my vision next who bitterly was weeping, and was saying, Why, O oh queen, didst thou through anger wish to be no more? Lavinia, not to lose thyself hast slain, and now hast lost me. Mother, this is I, who ere I mourn another's loss, mourn thine. As sleep is broken, when unwonted light strikes closed eyes suddenly, and being broken, quivers before it wholly dies away. Even so did my imagining break up, as soon as on my face there smote a light, brighter by far than we are wont to see. I turned around to notice where I was, when, lo, a voice which said, The ascent is here, from every other interest turned my mind, and made my will so eager to behold the speaker that, when such, it never rests until it sees its object face to face. But, as before the sun, which whelms our eyes and veils its figure through excess of light, so likewise here my visual powers failed. A godlike spirit this, who, though unasked, is pointing out to us our upward path, and with his own light is himself concealing. With us he deals as one would with himself, for he that waits to ask when seeing need, inclines already meanly to refuse. To such a bidding let us now accord our feet, and try to climb ere darkness come, for later one could not, till day returned. Thus said my leader then, and I with him, turned toward a flight of stairs our feet, and I, when on its first step near me felt, as twere, the motion of a wing, and on my face a fanning, while a voice said, Blessed are the peaceful, who are free from evil wrath. So high above us now were those last beams, which by the night are followed, that the stars were coming out on many sides. And, O oh, my strength, why dost thou fade away so fast? I to myself was saying, for a truce, I felt, was set the powers of my leg. We now were where the flight of stairs went up no further, and as motionless we were as is a vessel when the shore is reached and for a while I waited to find out if aught upon the new ring could be heard. Then, toward my teacher turning round, I said, Say, my dear father, what offence is purged in this ring, here, where now we are? Although our feet keep still, let not thy talking cease. And he to me, The love of good, when scant of what it should have been, is here atoned. Here beats again the ill-retarded oar. But now, in order that thou understand more clearly still, turn thou thy mind to me, and some good fruit thou gather from our stake. Neither creator, he began, nor creature, was e'er devoid of either innate love, or that which conscious is, and this thou knowest. The innate love is always free from error, but the other kind can err through evil aim, or through deficient 
or excessive strength, while well directed toward the primal goods and toward the secondary self-restrained, it cannot be the cause of sinful pleasure. But when it turns toward evil things or runs to good with more or less zeal than it ought, the creature then against his maker works. From this, then, thou canst understand that love must be the seed in you of every virtue and every deed that merits punishment. And now, since love can never turn its face from its own subject's welfare, from self-hate, all are secure. And since one cannot think of any self as being from the first divided and existing of itself, all hearts are thus debarred from hating him. It follows that, if I, in arguing, judge well, one's neighbour's is the harm one loves, and this is born in three ways in your clay. That's he who, on the abasement of his neighbour, his hope of rising sets, and only longs that from his greatness he may be brought low. And he who fears the loss of power, favour, renown, and honour should another rise, and grieves so that he loves the contrary. Then he who by injustice seems so shamed that greedy he becometh for revenge, and such must needs prepare for others' harm. This triform love is wept for here below, but now I'd have thee hear about the other, which runs to love in a corrupted way. All apprehend confusedly a good, wherein the mind can rest and long for it, and therefore every one attempts to reach it. If slothful be the love impelling you to see or win it, after just repentance, this present cornice tortures you for that. Another good there is, which never makes man happy. It is not real happiness, nor the good essence, fruit and root of all that's good. The love that yields too much to that is wept for in three rings above us here. But why it's reckoned threefold I say not that thou mayst seek the reason for thyself. Purgatorio 18 Purgatory The fourth ring, sloth Love and free will Instances of punished sloth The lofty doctor, having ended thus his argument, was looking in my eyes, eager to see if I seemed satisfied, and I, who by new thirst was still spurred on, was silent outwardly, and in me said, My many questions trouble him, perhaps. But that true father, who perceived the wish, which, being shy, did not disclose itself, by speaking first, emboldened me to speak. Hence, I. My vision, teacher, in thy light becomes so keen that clearly I discern all that thy talk implieth or unfolds. I therefore beg of thee, sweet father dear, explain to me why thou ascribes to love every good action and its contrary. Direct thine understandings, sharpened eyes toward me, he said and clear to thee will be the error of the blind who pose as guide. The mind, which is created prone to love, inclines toward everything that pleases it, when roused by pleasure to activity. Your faculty of apprehending draws an image from reality, and so displays it in you 
that your mind is caused to turn to it and if thus turned your mind inclines thereto that tendency is love is nature bound in you again by pleasure then just as fire by reason of its form moves upward being made for mounting thither where in its element it longer lasts even so the captive mind begins to yearn a motion of the soul and never rests until the thing it loveth gives it joy apparent to thee now can be the extent to which the truth is hid from those that claim that each love in itself deserveth praise because perhaps its object in itself seems always to be good and yet not good is every seal though good may be its wax thy words together with my heeding mind i answered him have shown me what love is but this hath made me bigger with a doubt for if love from without is born in us and if the soul can do naught else her doing or right or wrong is no desert of hers and he what reason sees here i can tell thee for aught beyond it can look thou alone to be a tweet for that's a work of faith every substantial form which is distinct from matter and is also joined with it hath in it a specific power collected which save in operation is not seen and only shows itself in its effects as life doth by its green leaves in a plant none knows however whence the understanding of first cognitions comes or whence the bent toward those first appetites which are in you as zeal for making honey is in bees this first will hence deserves nor praise nor blame now that all others be conformed to this the power which counsels inborn is in you and ought to hold the threshold of assent this is the source whence comes the ground of merit in you as it gathers in and winnows out your good and guilty loves those who in reasoning attained the bottom perceived this inborn liberty and left the world the teachings of morality supposing then that every love that flames within you rises of necessity within you lies the power to master it this noble virtue is by beatrice called freedom of the will hence see that thou recall it should she speak of it to thee the moon in rising close to midnight late and looking like a bucket all on fire was causing now the stars to seem more rare as counter to the heavens it caused the paths the sun and flames whene'er the romans sees it setting between the sards and corsicans and now that noble shade whence piatola hath greater fame than any mantuan village had put aside the load i laid on him hence i who as an answer to my questions had reaped his clear and easy talk remained like one confused because of drowsiness but suddenly this sleepiness of mine was taken from me by a crowd of people who back of us were circling toward us now and as ismenus and asopus once along their banks saw maddened throngs at night whene'er the thebans needed bacchus such were those who sweeping scythe-like round that ring 
for coming on from what I saw of them, by good will ridden, and by righteous love. And soon were they upon us, for the whole of that great crowd was moving at a run, and two ahead in tears were crying out. Mary proceeded to the hills in haste, and Caesar, in order to subdue Ilerda, struck Marseille, then hurried on to Spain. Quick, quick, lest time be lost through lack of love, cried those that came behind them, so that zeal in doing good may make grace green again. O oh, folk, in whom keen fervour now redeems, perhaps, the negligence and slowness shown by your tepidity in doing good. This man who lives, and truly I lie not, desires when sunlight once returns to man. Hence tell us where the nearest opening lies. These were my leader's words, and one of those same spirits said, Come on behind us, then, and thou wilt find the hall. So keen we are to keep on moving that we cannot stop. Forgive us, then, if lack of courtesy thou deem what we consider righteousness. I was San Zeno's abbot at Verona, under the rule of worthy Barbarossa, of whom Milan in sorrow talketh still, and he has one foot in the grave already, who soon will for that monastery weep, and grieve because he had it in his power, for he, his son, in body wholly sick, were still in mind, and also ill-begot, as had installed in its true shepherd's place. I know not if aught else he said, or ceased, so far had he run past us now, but this I heard, and I've enjoyed retaining it. Then he who was my help in every need, said, Turn in this direction, and behold two coming on, who give a bite to sloth. Moving behind them all, they said, The folk for whom the sea was opened up were dead, before the Jordan had perceived their heirs, and those who were the son of Anchises could not endure to toil until the end, gave themselves up to lead inglorious lives. Then, when those shades were separated from us so far, that they no longer could be seen, a new thought made its way into my mind, whence many other different thoughts were born, and I between them so confused became, that wandering to and fro I closed mine eyes, and changed what I had thought into a dream. Purgatorio, 19 Purgatory, the fourth ring, sloth, Dante's second dream, the angel of zeal, the fifth ring, avarice, and prodigality. Within the hour, when vanquished by the earth, or even at times by Saturn, daytime's heat can warm the coldness of the moon no longer, when geomancers see their greater fortune rise in the east ere dawn, and on a path which doth not long stay dark for it. A female approached me in a dream, with stammering tongue, with eyes a squint and crooked on her feet, with hands lopped off and pallor on her face. I fixed my gaze on her, and as the sun brings comfort to cold limbs which night-time chills, even so my looking at her freed her tongue, and afterward, in but a little time, completely straightened her, and gave that hue to her discoloured face which love desires. As soon as she had thus unloosed her speech, she then began to sing in such a way that from her I could hardly take my gaze. I am 
she sang the lovely siren she who in mid-ocean mariners bewitches so much i please whoever heareth me i turned ulysses from his wandering course to hear my song and who gets used to me seldom departs so holy i content him her mouth had not yet closed when lo a holy lady at my side appeared who ready was to put her to confusion oh virgil virgil who is this she cried in scornful tones whereat he then advanced with eyes set only on the modest one she seized the other opened her in front and rent her garments showing me her belly this woke me with the stench that issued from it i turned my eyes and my good teacher said i've called thee thrice at least arise and come we'll find the gate through which thou mayest ascend i rose and all the holy mountains rings were with the high day's light already filled as with the new sun back of us we moved while i was following him i held my head like one who having it bowed down by thought makes of himself a half arch of a bridge and then i heard come on the pass is here uttered in such a gentle kindly way as in this mortal land is never heard with outspread wings which seemed the wings of swan he who thus spoke directed us on high tween the two side walls of the granite rock he moved his pinions then and fanning us affirmed that those who mourn are happy since possessed of comfort shall their spirits be what aileth thee that only on the ground thou gazest said my guide when past the angel both he and i had climbed a little way and i a recent dream which to itself inclines me makes me with such doubt advance that i cannot refrain from thought of it thou hast perceived said he that ancient witch who henceforth o'er us is alone lamented and seen how from her one is freed let that suffice thee strike thy heels upon the ground and turn thine eyes up toward the calling lure the eternal king whirls with the mighty wheel as is the falcon which at first looks down then turns around when called and spreads his wings keen for the quarry which attracts him such was i and thus as long as ere the rock was cleft to make a path for those that climb i went along to where the circling starts when out upon the fifth ring i had come people therein i saw who shedding tears were lying wholly prone upon its bed my soul hath cloven to the trodden ground i heard them saying with such heavy sighs that what they said could hardly be made out o oh, ye elect of god whose sufferings here justice and hope are making less intense direct us toward the steps that lead on high if ye are come exempt from lying down and wish to find the path with greatest speed let your right sides be always outward turned thus asked the poet and not far ahead thus was the answer given hence as he spoke i noticed where the other speaker hid and then i turned mine eyes unto my lord whereat he granted with a cheerful nod that which the looks of my desiring asked when i was free to act as i inclined 
I came and stood above the soul, whose words had made me notice him at first, and said, Spirit, who by thy tears art ripening that without which one cannot return to God, for my sake stay a while thy greater care. Say who thou wast, why ye hold up your back, and whether thou wouldst have me get the aught from there whence I, a living man, set forth. And he to me, why toward itself the sky is turning here our backs, thou'lt know. But first, know thou that I once sat in Peter's chair. Tween Siestri and Chiaveri there descends a lovely mountain stream, and from its name my race's title takes its greatest boast. For one month and a little more I felt how much the mighty mantle weighs on him and keeps it from the mire, for all loads else seem feathered. My conversion was, alas, delayed, but when Rome's shepherd I was made, I came to know how false the world's life was. I saw that in it hearts can find no rest, nor could one in it higher rise than I. The love of this life hence was kindled in me. Till that time I had been a wretched soul cut off from God and wholly given to greed. Now, as thou seest, I'm punished for it here. What avarice doth is here made manifest in this purgation of converted souls. Nor hath this mount a penalty more bitter and as our eyes were never upward turned, because intently fixed on earthly things, so justice here hath turned them to the ground. As avarice quenched our love for all good things, until well-doing had completely ceased, so here doth justice hold us in restraint, bound fast and fettered in our hands and feet and here will stay, stretched out and motionless, as long as it shall please the righteous Lord. I had knelt down, and wished to speak, but just as I began, and he was made aware, by listening only of my reverence, What cause, said he, hath bent thee down with thus? And I to him, Because of your high rank, my conscience troubled me for standing up, straighten thy legs my brother he replied and rise and not with thee and with the rest a fellow-servant of one power am i if thou hast ever fully understood those holy gospel words they neither marry well canst thou see why i am speaking thus and now be gone and have thee stay no more for lingering here thou hinderest the tears wherewith I ripen that which thou hast said. A niece I have up yonder, called Alagia, good in herself, so be it that our house by its example do not make her bad, and she is all that's left to me up there. Purgatorio 20 Purgatory, the fifth ring, avarice and prodigality instances of liberality and of greed the earthquake a will fights weakly against a stronger will hence i myself displeasing him to please out of the water drew my sponge unfilled i started and along the space left clear close to the rocky cliff my leader moved as neath its battlements one hugs a war, for those who through their eyes pour drop by drop the evil which pervadeth all the world approach too closely to the outer edge. Be thou accursed, thou ancient wolf, that prey far greater hast than have all other beasts, by reason of thy hunger's endless depth. O oh, heaven, through whose revolving sum it seems, believe that here below conditions change 
when will he come through whom this beast shall leave as on we went with slow and scanted steps and i was listening to the shades i heard weeping and uttering piteous lamentation by chance i heard in front of us a voice cry out sweet mary in the tearful tone wherewith a woman cries in childbirth's pang and this was followed by as poor thou wast as by the hostelry may be perceived where thou didst lay thy sacred burden down next after this i heard o oh, good fabricius with virtue thou didst poverty prefer to great possessions with iniquity so pleasing had these last words been to me that further on i moved that i might know the spirit from whose lips they seemed to come he now was speaking of the generous gift bestowed by nicholas upon the maids to guide their youth into an honoured path o oh, soul that speakest of such worthy deeds say who thou wast said i and why alone thou thus renewest this deserved praise thy words will not remain without reward if i return to end that life's short course which flieth onward towards its final term and he i'll tell it thee though not for help that i may look for yonder but because grace shines so brightly in thee ere thy death i was the root of that malignant plant whose shadow darkens all the christian land so that good fruit is seldom picked from it but if do i lille gent and bruges could vengeance would soon be wrought for this and i of him requested who is judge of all yonder my name was hugh capet from me have sprung the phillips and the louis who have in recent ages governed france a paris butcher's son i was when all the ancient kings had passed away save one a grey-robed monk tight in my hands i found the bridle of the kingdom's government with so much power of recent game and such a host of friends that to the widowed crown was raised the head of mine own son with whom the line of their anointed bones began as long as its great dowry of provence had not deprived my family of shame its worth was small but still it did no harm with that began its thefts by force and fraud for afterward to make amends pontier it seized with normandy and gascony charles came to italy and there to make amends a victim made of conradin and then to make amends drave thomas back to heaven a time i see not very long from now which out of france will bring another charles to make both him and his the better known he issues thence alone and with no host but with the jousting lance of judas this he thrusts so that he bursts the paunch of florence as a result not land but sin and shame he'll win of so much greater weight for him the lighter he accounts such loss i see the other charles once captured from his ship his daughter sell and haggle for the price as corsairs do with slave girls not their own what more o avarice canst thou do with us since thou hast to thyself so drawn my race that even for its own flesh it careth not that future ills and past ones may seem less i see alania by the lily entered and in his vicar christ a prister made i see the latter mocked a second time i see the vinegar and gore renewed and him i see among living robbers killed and this new pilot i behold so ruthless that not content with this 
he lawlessly into the temple bears his greedy sails oh when my lord shall i rejoice to see the vengeance in thy secret counsel hid which now avails to make thine anger sweet what of the holy spirit's only bride i said just now and thereby made thee turn to me for explanation serves as answer to all our prayers as long as daylight lasts but soon as night returns instead of these we utter words which sound the opposite we thereupon rehearse pygmalion's story and how of him his greedy lust for gold a traitor made a thief and parricide and avaricious midas misery which followed from his covetous request and at which one will always have to laugh next foolish Akon, every one recalls who stole the plunder so that even here the wrath of joshua seems to bite him still we then accuse sapphira with her husband we praise the kicks which heliodorus got while polymnestor circles all the mount in infamy who polydorus killed and finally a cry is tell us crassus for thou dost know it what's the taste of gold aloud at times speaks one another low as each one's feelings spur him on to speak in stronger now and now in weaker tones hence i in speaking of the good which here is talked about by day was not alone but near us here none other spoke aloud already had we gone away from him striving to make our way along the path as fast as was allowed our powers when i like something falling felt the mountain quake then such a chill took hold of me as he is wont to have who goeth to his death delos indeed shook not so terribly before latona made therein her nest in order to give birth to heaven to eyes then such a cry arose on every side that close to me my teacher drew and said be not afraid while i am guiding thee glory to god they all said in the highest as far as i could understand from those nearby where what was being shouted could be heard both motionless and in suspense we stood as stood the shepherds who first heard that song till when the trembling stopped the shouting ceased thereafter we resumed our holy journey watching the shades that lay upon the ground returned already to their wounded plaint no ignorance had ever with as great anxiety made me desire to know unless in this my memory go astray as that which as i thought i seemed to have i neither dared to ask because of haste nor could i see there anything myself so on i went timid and lost in thought end of chapter fifty nine